Okay, everyone, thank you so much for coming. You're here to see On Dean by Jean Giraudoux. Thank you, enjoy the show.
I'll go rub him down at once. Thanks very much, but I'd like to touch. I make it an invariable rule to rub down my horse. What may I ask now? The house is yours, my lord. Oh, what a storm! The rain has been brought steadily down my neck since noon. That's what we fear most, we knights, heard. The rain. And a flea. What the flea gets in here? Do you care to remove your armor, my lord? My dear August, have you ever seen a lobster shed as careless? Then you shall know it is not the affair moment. I shall rest first. You said your name was August, I believe. And my wife, Eugenie. Ah, August and Eugenie. Charming names. Excuse me, my lord, then our names were Nightary. Eugenie, when you have spent a month in the forest searching in vain for Osmond and Fairmount, you cannot imagine his joy when he comes suddenly across dinner time upon August and Eugenie. Excuse me, my lord, I know it's no matter to annoy a guest with questions, but are you hungry? Yes, oh, I am extremely hungry. It will give me great pleasure to supper. We already suffered, my lord, but there is a trout. We are not making it. With the greatest pleasure. We you like a broth or fry? Poach, if you please. Poach? I would really do like them best sauteed with a little white butter. It's very good. Well, since you ask my preference, right. I need mean, perhaps with fresh cream. When we say poach, it's when the fish is boiled alive. Yes, alive. So that the fish retains all its tenderness because the boiling water surprises it. Surprises is the word, my lord. Then that's it. I'll have it broiled. They're very nice. Besides the lemon. I'm happy to see, August, that the knights aren't all welcome in these parts. Much more welcome than armies, my lord. When the winter is over, the robins come. When the wars are over, the knights. A knight here is a sign of peace. Oh, I love war. Each man to his own taste. Well, don't misunderstand me. If I love war, it is because, well, by nature, I am a friendly person. I love company. Now, in war, you always have someone to talk to. If your comrades don't feel like talking, there's always the enemy. You can always get yourself in prison. But isn't it true that the knights could understand the language of the animals? Ah, uh, yes, that's true enough. The lion speaks to us of courage. The stag speaks to us of nobility. The lie, uh, the unicorn of chastity, is stimulating. But you don't call that conversation. But the birds, to tell you the truth, August, I'm a bit disappointed with the birds. They chatter incessantly. They're not good listeners. If you don't mind me asking, my lord, what brings you to the Black Forest? What do you suppose, August, a woman? I ask no more questions. No, please, it's been a month since I said a word about her to any human being. No, ask me anything. Ask me her name. My lord, I didn't dare. Ask me, ask me. What's your name, my lord? Bertha. The Princess Bertha. Tell me, fisherman, have you ever heard such a Beautiful name as Bertha. It is a beautiful name, my lord. Anybody can be called Angelica, Diana, Violante, but she alone deserves a name so solemn, so vibrant, so passionate. Bertha. And now, Eugenie, you will ask me Is she beautiful? Is she beautiful? We are speaking of Bertha, Eugenie, of the Princess Bertha. Uh huh. Is she beautiful? Eugenie, it is I who entrusted with the purchases of horses for the king. You shall know. My eye is sharp. No blemish ever escapes me. Angelica's okay. She has a ridge in her left thumbnail. Violante has a flag of gold in her eyes. A flag of gold? Bertha is flawless. That must be a marvelous thing to see a flag of gold. Stick to your fishing! Yes, fisherman. Why the sudden partiality for Violante? Violante, when she joins us in the fight, crowns a white man. And it's a pretty sight, a red-haired girl in a white bear, there is no denying it. But when the old duke tells her a spicy story, she never laughs. She cries. Violante cries? I know. You're going to ask what happens to those flecks of gold when they are bathed in tears. Oh, he's surely thinking of it, my lord, once he gets his mind on anything. Yes, for you shall see it, for you're invited to our wedding. The both of you. You hear that, Eugene? The condition Bertha made to our match was that I should spend a month in the forest. And if I do return, it will be thanks to you. And so, fisherman, you shall see the effect she makes. You shall see the effect she makes next to my great dog angel. Auntie! How beautiful he is. What did she say? I said how beautiful he is. It's the one to know that men are so beautiful. My heart is racing. Will you be quiet? I'm trembling from head to foot. 
And start talking about her. She's only 16. I knew there must have been a reason for being a girl, and that reason is that men are so beautiful. You're embarrassing your guest, Auntie. I'm not embarrassing him. He likes me. What's your name? That's no way to speak to a night, my child. Look at his ear, Father. It's a purple little shell. Do you expect me to treat it like a stranger? To whom do you belong to, little shell? What is his name? His name is Paul. When people are happy and they open their mouths, they say Hans. Hans always can shut. When there is a sun in the world and the cloud of darkness lifts from your soul, when they sigh, you hear Hans. Hans on can shine too. How wonderful when a name makes its own echo. Why have you come? Is it taking you away? That's enough, Auntie. Go to your room. Very well. Take me, take me with you. Here's your trout, my mother. Oh, she looks magnificent. This trout? Mother, you dare punch a trout? Be quiet. And you just, it's done. You poor thing, who would do this? You're not going to make a scene before a guest who now. Who did it? Oh, it was I, my girl, who asked him to do it. You? I should have known. When one looks closely at your face, it all becomes clear. You're not so smart, are you? She doesn't know what she's saying, my lord. That's chivalry. That's courage. You go around chasing giants that don't exist, and when you spring upon a little creature springing choice in the water, you boil it alive. And I eat it. And I find it delicious. Oh, well, you shall see how delicious it is. Auntie! Oh, now eat that. Where are you going, child? There is a man out there who knows about men, and now I shall listen to him. Auntie! Oh, And they already know that they love you. What did you just say? Nothing. Say it once more just to be sure. I said they already know that they love you. I hate them. Congratulations. You've raised her well. God knows I sold her enough. You should punish her. <laughs> punish her? Try and catch her. Then set her to bed without supper. What good would that do when Dean doesn't eat? Lucky there, I'm starved. Uh, that was the last of our chop, my lord, but we do have a smoked ham. I'll go down and get you some slices. And she permits you to kill her poor darling pigs? Auntie has no interest in pigs. That's a pig. You're annoyed with the girl. I'm annoyed because, well, I'm vain. When she said I was handsome, though I am well, not handsome, I was charmed. When she said I was a coward, though I know I'm no coward, I was hurt. I'm annoyed with myself. You're very kind to take it so well. Take it well at all, I'm furious. The gods, I can't find the ham. Why the ham is hanging in the cellar? I looked everywhere. I can't find Excuse me, my lord. I'll go get it. My name is Andy. It's a charming name. Hans Nandi. There are no other beautiful names in the world, are there? Yes, Andy and Hans. No, Hans first. Hans is the man. Hans commands. Andy. She's the girl. She's always one step behind. She keeps quiet. She keeps quiet. Hans is always one step ahead. Hans is the first to die. And Undine, she kills herself. It's terrible. What she follows at once. What are you talking about? In life, there is that one moment of agony that everyone has to live through. And it's after the death of Hans. Luckily, at your age, doesn't mean much to talk about. At my age? Is that what you think? Very well. Here. Kill yourself. And see if I don't die the very next moment. I've never felt less like killing myself. Say you don't love me and see if I don't die the very next moment. Fifteen minutes. 
minutes ago, you didn't even know I existed. And now you want to kill yourself on my account? I thought we had quarrel on account of the trout. I can't be bothered by the trout. They're not very smart, these things. If they didn't want to be caught, all they had to do was stay away from me. But I am different. I want to be caught. In spite of what your mysterious friend outside has to say about men. You didn't tell me anything I didn't already know. Naturally not. You asked the questions, you gave the answer. Don't joke. He's very powerful and very dangerous. Who? The old one. The king of the sea. The king of the sea? I'm afraid of him. Afraid of what? That you'll deceive me. That's what he said. Do you not know share with you? No. I would like to. But I can only be beautiful if you love me. You sure, little liar. You were just as beautiful a moment ago when you hated me. Is that all he told you? Well, he also said, if I ever kissed you, I will be lost forever. It's crazy that he said that because I hadn't even thought about it until he said it. And now you're thinking of it. Very much. It does not want to think. No, it's good to think. But we shall wait as long as possible, so that in the after years, we shall have to remember. We shall wait an hour. Hans, I can't wait an hour. Say it, say it to me quickly. You think that's something one just says like that? No. What, what, what must I do? What is the appropriate posture? Do I sit in your lap? Is that it? In my lap, in full armor. Do you know what you're saying? Take it off quickly. Quickly? It takes me. Fifteen minutes to unload the shoulder plates all over. Uh, 
Aunt Dina, I'd like to say a word. Exactly 12 fish. 
a lake that seems to never enter your boat. Even though you have a hole at the bottom, you must agree that it's a remarkably kind lake. So you're saying I should ask per the, the lake permission to marry on deep? I wouldn't joke about the lake. The lake has ears. Oh, and I will gladly take the lake to my bosom, and with it, the, the sea, my brother, the ocean, my mother, and the sea itself, my father-in-law. Beware the water, my lord. But I love the water. Oh, August, give me on thee. Give you on thee? Who am I to give you on thee? We shall never see her again. Come with us. It's time to get to bed. Do you remember the day we found her, Eugenie? There wasn't a mark in the sand to show how the child got there. Tomorrow we shall speak about it. If there is not. Good night, my lord. Good night. Good night. Take me in tonight. Kiss me. Pardon? Don't look at me, handsome knight. Don't come closer. If you touch me, I'll scream. Don't worry. Come to me. Take me. What are you talking about? Am I being too bold, handsome knight? Do I frighten you? Not the slightest. We rather over something else. Not at all. Kiss me. Don't go any closer, handsome knight. If you touch my hair, if you kiss my lips, I swear I'll kill myself. No, no. Don't come out, handsome knight. I'm not for you, handsome knight. Come to me, take me. Don't touch me. I'm yours. Keep your distance. I want you. You frighten me. How silly you look. The both of you. <laughs> Dean, what is this nonsense for? Who are these women? My friends. They say that anyone can have it for the asking. But that's not true. They're quite attractive, your friends. Are they the prettiest? No. The cleverest. Kiss me, Hans. Kiss me, Hans. Go away. How silly one looks when she offers herself to a man. Don't you know when you've lost? What, what are you saying? Oh, do you let them speak? No. It's the song of the three sisters. They're going to sing it. Don't listen. Close your ears. But I love music. Time to finish, time to finish, time. Life shall life for the reaper. Now this fastest mind is thine. Love me always, leave me never. Oh, oh, that was charm. In what way was that charming? Well, it's simple. It's direct. It's charming. The song of the three sirens must have been that. It was exactly that. They just copied it. Close your ears, they're gonna sing it again. Don't listen. Come and take your fill of pleasure. Taste the light and drink it deep. We shall give you beyond measure. Joy and love and rest and sleep. The tune is not bad. You've lost, Undine. You've lost. Nonsense. What have you lost? What have you lost, Omni? I'm confused. What have you lost? No. He kisses your lips on me and he smiles at me. He holds his arms on me but he looks at me. He kisses your lips on me but he looks at me. He, he may see you. <laughs> he may look at you. And he may smile at you and he may kiss you as much as he pleases. But he loves me. And I'm going to be his wife. And you agree? I agree. I made the pact. Are we to tell them? Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them all. Those who swim in the sunlight and those who crawl on the bottom of the ocean floor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tell them I made the pact. Yes. Tell the old one he lies. Lies. Tell him that I hate him. What a fuss. What a racket. Naturally, it's in the family. Are you troubled, my little Hans? Body and soul. You don't wish to struggle, just a little bit more. I'm too happy to struggle. You know, ever since I was a kid, I felt something drawn me to this lady. 
awake to this forest. It was you? Yes. And after 20 years, would it be so much for you to say that at least that you love me? I love you. You say it too easily. You said it before. I've said it to every woman I didn't love. And now at last, I know what it means. Why didn't you love these women? Were they ugly? No, they were beautiful. But they no longer exist. So, where are these women that you don't love? Will I ever see them? Of course. Where? In their gardens, in their castles, at the court. At the court, I? Of course, we leave tomorrow morning. Am I still leaving my lake so soon? I want to show the world the most beautiful thing it possess. Do you know that you are the most beautiful thing in the world possess? I suspect it. But will they know? Will they have the eyes to see? The world will know what you see. It's very beautiful, Undine, the world. Well, in your world, Hans, do lovers live together? Together? Of course. No, you don't understand. When a man and a woman love each other, are they ever separate? Separate? Oh, of course. No, you still don't understand. Um, take a dogfish, for example. Once a dogfish meets his mate, he never leaves her side, not even for a moment. They are no longer two, they become one. In our world, Undine, each man has his work, his play. In our world, Undine, a whale can come between a man and a woman 20 times a day. I was afraid of that. Well, that just merely proves that man and fish aren't the same. And you and I, we are the same? Yes, sir. And you promised me that you will never leave my side, not even for a moment. I promise you. Because now that I love you, one step away, my loneliness begins. I'll never leave you with me. Seriously, Hans, listen to me. I know someone very powerful who can join us together. He will join us by flesh, so that nothing but death can keep us apart. Would you like me to call him? No. I know what you're thinking. Of course, my little Undine is right. But once in a while, I shall take my turn by myself. I shall go visit a friend. Or my horse. Or your horse. Well, as a matter of fact, I'd better go check up on it now. We have a long trip in the morning, and I ought to go see if he's bed properly. Besides, I always tell him everything. Oh, uh, well, tonight you are not going to tell me anything. Why not? Because tonight, my horse, you're going to sleep.
way to present his bride to the court. His majesty has happened to provide an interlude which to grace the occasion. But, but there are such as happy meetings, lady. The time is short, my lord Chamberlain. It couldn't be any shorter. Well, as superintendent of the royal theaters, what do you propose? Slumbo! But you played that only last night for the Margrave's party. Besides, Salambo is sad. It's a sad, but a dread. I don't see why it's any more ready than Orpheus, which requires only one main character. Or, uh, the interlude of Adam and Eve, which requires no costume. <laughs> <laughs> Excellency, my success in the theater is based solely on the discovery that each particular stage has its likes and dislikes. Which is useless to combat. Time presses, my good man. Each theater, Excellency, was built for one play and one play only. The whole secret of management is to figure out what play that is. It is not easy, especially when the play is not yet written. And so a thousand disasters until that happy day when the play comes with proper theater and gives its life, its soul, and if I say so myself, its gender. The superintendent. For years I managed a theater that bumbled along miserably with the classics. Until one night, I found the joy of all the force of sailors. It was a female theater. I knew another which only tolerated Hamlet. It was male. Last year, I was forced to close the royal ballet. Impossible to determine its gender. And you believe the royal auditorium? It exists only for Salambo. Yes, Your Excellency. At the worst, Salambo, the tightness of the throat in which the royal course is normally afflicted. Aqua per favore. Suddenly relaxes, and the hall is rich with resonance and joy. Have you ever heard of anyone forgetting a line or missing a cue in Salambo? But all the same. Can I tell you, my Lord Chamberlain, sometimes when I play a German opera, I lose one of my singers, brimming out with happiness, sending out full throated tones which fill the audience with such joy and applause. Why? Because among, among his fellow actors, who are merely grinding out their parts by rote, this actor, in the general confusion, is blissfully singing his role of Salambo. No! It would hardly do to end the day in a newly married couple that gets out the hour. Salambo is out! I'm not. And who are you? I'm an illusionist, Your Excellency. Where is your apparatus? I'm an illusionist, not an apparatus. Now, what do you take us for? You don't produce collapse of thunder and lightning without apparatus. Yes. Nonsense. You don't produce a sudden blackout which leaves the stage covered in flowers without apparatus. Yes. What stubborn is? Just a moment. You don't produce a full of the eyes of Lord Chamberlain. Venus, in this case, will attire. Excellent. Oh, without apparatus. <laughs> yes. Oh, madam. I always wondered who these Venuses were that would just produce that thin air. Oh, Reddit. Oh, Venus herself. It depends on the magician. Excellent. His Majesty is unavoidably detained by the African envoy. The reception is postponed. Excellent. That, that, that gives us time to think of something. Uh, have you thought of something? Uh, yes, Excellency. Huh. Salambo! No! And uh, how do you propose to abuse His Majesty? Hmm. Well, if your excellency permits, I shall do what the occasion aspires. That's asking a great deal after all, we have never seen your work. I'd be happy to offer up a little bit of private entertainment by the way of demonstration. Ah, so splendid. What would your excellency like to see? I, <gasps> I shall bring them together at once. On uh, my meter, you are also. I shall bring together a man and a woman who will carefully avoid each other. The last six months. Here? Now? Here and now! Now, if you don't be so good to conceal yourselves. That's impossible, my dear fellow. Uh, consider the gentleman in question. Right now, at this very moment, he's in the royal apartments, attending to the last details of his wife's costumes. A tornado could not draw him from her. 
The injured lady, on the other hand, has locked herself in a room, sworn under no circumstances will she appear. These two cannot possibly meet. Hmm. But if the dog were to steal the bride's glove and run out into the garden with it, and the lady's pet bullfinch were to fly out of its cage, landing perched on a fountain. That will get you nowhere. It is the halberdier's duty to divert all dogs from royal apartments. As for the bird, his majesty just released the falcon, and at this very moment it is circling above the bullfinch's cage. Hmm. Ha! Yes. But if we say the halberdier slipped on a banana peel, and a gazelle distracts the falcon's attention. Bananas and gazelles are unknown in these parts. Yes, but the African and boy, while waiting for his morning lights, peels a banana. And among the gifts sent to him by the government was a gazelle. Why the choice for the magicians? Now, I shall bring together Han von Wittenstein and Princess Bertha together in this hall. Really? What excellency, why are we doing this evil thing? A sooner or later it would have to happen, Bertram. That's life. Then why not let life take its course? My dear Bertram, you are young. When you get to reach my age, you'll understand that life is a very poorly constructed play. By rule, the curtains go up at the wrong parts, the climaxes never come off, the denouement is eternally postponed. If this magician can let life unfold with the grace and precision it requires, can you? Perhaps. Just one little scene, then just one little scene. But the poor girl. The poor girl has caused the knight to be false to his word. She deserves to suffer. But why should you? Don't excite yourself, my boy. Sooner or later, in a normal course of events, Hans and Bert would meet. Six months after that, they would kiss. A year after that, they would, uh. <laughs> it's inevitable. If we can spare ourselves all these delays and bring their hands together at once, and ten minutes after that, their lips, and five minutes after that, whatever else is necessary. <laughs> Would we really be changing anything at all? And not a bit. We'd just be giving a little pace, a little tempo. Magician, what's that noise? The hop of there, he slipped on a banana peel. Oh, fantastic. Excellency, I beg you, let's carry this no further. It's a mischievous thing. Left to themselves, perhaps these two would never meet again. <laughs> The gazelle, the falcon struck it! Ah, fantastic! You think you can bring the whole thing off in this case, magician? Hmm, perhaps. <gasps> the bird! The dog! The knight! The lady! Thank heaven! The magician, what is the meaning of this? Are you trying to make fun of us? Sorry, sir. A little false direction. Are they going to be there? Why are they not? Of course! Even if I have to bump their heads together! Now! Again? What that for you are? Again? What an obstinate beast! I beg your pardon, Bertha. I'm sorry, Holmes. Did I hurt you? No, not a bit. I'm a clumsy beast, but Yes, you are. Pleasant honeymoon. Marvelous. You know, I was happy in your arms. That night under the oak tree, for long ago I had carved your name. I thought it was for always. And so it could have been, had you not insisted on sending me into the forest on a wild goose chase. I thought that in the darkness of the forest you would see my face in every shadow. How could I have known you could have come upon someone else's? How could I have known? I thought it was a woman's glory to lead her love not only to his desk and his bed, but whatever in the world is hardest to find and most difficult to conquer. I was wrong. If you wanted me so bad, why didn't you keep me? One takes off a ring sometimes to show one's friends. Even an engagement ring. I'm sorry the ring didn't understand. No, it didn't. And so it brought this ring still onto the nearest bed. I beg your pardon. Forgive me, I shouldn't have mentioned it yet. My pastor's asleep in the shower, and you pick it up in the morning after. 
If you can answer this, I shall owe you a fault. What does a wooden stein bear on his, on his shield? On a field does there a squirrel peasant youth? Now, does he bear this device in combat? Never! At the moment he lowers his visor, his squire hands him a shield with three lines rampant. This is a device of war. Uh, Bertha, you're incredible! And how does Wittgenstein approach the baron? Lance squared, chapter collected, Simo trot. Ah, uh, Bertha, what a lucky man the knight who will marry you will be! Magician, you have us on pins and needles. Quickly, the third scene, the first quarrel of Hans and Undine. Couldn't we at least let that take care of itself? No, no, we never get to see it. His Majesty will be here in a moment. By heavens, that's true. This gives me just enough time to give the lady the word of, uh, the, the word of advice that magician asks every debutante at court. Uh, you're not planning on doing anything till I get back, do you, magician? Just one time, you see, perhaps. In connection with what? In connection with nothing at all. Just for an old fisherman, you, my love. Your Excellency can leave, of course. Oh, no one must. Hmm. If your Excellency permits, I shall say with a charm go. Take your places, and you shall see yourself speaking to her. But you can't do that. Of course. What a remarkable illusion! But first, Lady Violante. Fleck of gold. Are you the Lady Violante? Yes, what do you wish? I was right. Marvelous. Oh, thank God you got out of here. Thank you, my lady. Your Excellency, here you come. But it would be so simple, Your Excellency. Please. It's so restful. Absolutely out of the question, my dear lady. But it would make me so happy. To turn the court reception into a water festival, third class, is entirely out of the question. Every time we let the water run into the pool, it costs us a fortune. But this will cost you nothing. But please don't insist. You will be so calm in the water, especially you. Look at your head, it's damp, and the water would not show. I beg your pardon? My palm is not damp. Yes, it is. Look at it, and you will see. My dear girl, do you care for a minute to listen to word of advice? Yes. To listen without I interrupting? Shouldn't dream of interrupting. Excellent. Now, the court is a sacred precinct in which it is necessary at all times. Oh, Bertram. You are the poet, are you not? So they say. You're not very beautiful. They say that as well, but they usually whisper it. Yes, Your Excellency. As I was saying, mm -hmm. the court is a sacred precinct in which it is necessary at all times for man's highest face and emotion. For example, when he is afraid, he appears to be brave. And when he is lying, he appears to be frank. And if, by chance, he appears to be telling the truth, it is best for him to appear to be lying. It inspires confidence. I see. But let us take the example that you and your innocence bring up. It is true, my palm perspires. Ever since I was a child, it has caused me infinite embarrassment. But damp as my hand is, my arm is long, it extends to the throne. To displease me is to put oneself in jeopardy, and it does not please me to hear my physical shortcomings. To be precise, my physical shortcoming. Now, as a sophisticated court lady, how is my hand? Damp or dry? Damp, like your feet. What? Excuse me. The most beautiful. The most beautiful of your poems? The most beautiful of all poems. It far surpassed the others as you surpass all women. Tell it to me quickly. Oh, I don't remember it. It came to me in a dream. You should have written it down sooner. I 
did. Maybe a little too soon. I was still dreaming when I wrote it. My dear girl, let's admit that Lord Chamberlain's poem is there. And let's admit that he admits it. But tell me this. Will you tell his majesty that his poem is down? No. Ah, very good. And why? Because it's not. Uh, but I put you in the case where it is. Look here, my dear girl. Suppose his majesty should, should ask you about, about the wart on his nose. And believe me, his majesty has a wart on his nose and it is dead to anyone to mention it. Now, uh, suppose he asked you what his wart resembled. Is it? Uncommon for someone who meets a lady for the first time to ask him what his wart resembles. It's a hypothetical situation, my dear lady, in the event that you should have a wart on your I nose. I shall never have a wart on my nose. Warts come from touching frogs, did you know that? Madam, the Chamberlain is really trying to tell you that it is inconsiderate to remind people of their ugliness. It is inconsiderate for them to be ugly. Why should they be ugly? Courtesy is an investment, my dear girl. When you grow old, people tell you that you look unique. When you are ugly, they will say that you look interesting. And all of this on a little payment from your heart now. I shall never grow old. What a title you are! Yes, excuse me. Yeah, I'm Jack Bond, very much. I like you, Bertram. I'm delighted that the Chamberlain is annoyed. Oh, dear. <laughs> My dear girl. Yeah, it's just time now for me to instruct you of the question that his master asks every debutante at the court. It has to do with the labor of Hercules. Hercules, as you know, is his majesty's name. He is Hercules the sixth. Now, listen carefully. Would you just Madam, do you not understand that his master is almost here? And when he asks you about the sixth name of Hercules, to it. Excellency! What does this mean, Excellency? Well, it's not Thomas. Have you put me below the Margrave of Soul? Yes. I am entitled to the third rank below the king and the silver fork. You are entitled to the first rank and even the golden fork. Had a certain thing has gone out as we had predicted, but your present marriage has granted you the 14th place in the butcher's food. The 14th place? I've been to the kitchen. I'm sure there's enough for everyone. <laughs> and why are you laughing, Bertram? I'm laughing because my heart is happy. You don't wish to stop him from laughing, huh? He's laughing at you. No, he's not. He has no desire to displease me, do you, Bertram? That's very true, madam. Don't be angry with my husband. I am flattered that he should be so defensive on my account. We all envy him the privilege. Thank you very much. Don't show your fear. Be like me. I am trembling as well. But an earthquake cannot shake the smile on my face. Oh, dear. Go away. What are you doing here? First, you need to tame it. Hard intrusion. Yes, on one condition that you go away. I will if you like. But you will call me back. Ladies and gentlemen, His Majesty, the King. Hail, like Margaret and Stein. Your Majesty. Your Majesty, with your most gracious permission, may I present to you Lady von Wittgenstein to Wittgenstein. Uh, My name is Ali. Your courtesy, madam. To receive you in this gallery, which we call the Hall of Hercules, and I love Hercules. And of all my many names, his by far the one I've always been known. Ever since I was a child, I've tried to emulate him in everything. And I must admit, at work, at play, I've tried to emulate him.
Bertha. I beg your pardon. Well, you shall never have him, Bertha. What? Undine. You will never have him, Bertha. Just go quite well, my dear. My lady. If you look at him, if you touch him, if you even speak to him, I will kill you. Well, she's not used to court. The girl is mad. I beg you, your majesty, save us. I'm frightened. Your, your majesty, I had hoped to offer by way of interlude a little diversion. His majesty is sufficiently diversion, diverted. His adopted daughter has been insulted before the court by a peasant. Oh, your majesty, the minister to take our leave. I have an adorable wife. She is very innocent and says whatever comes into her head. I humbly beg for your forgiveness. You see, King? Do you see what's happening? But there's a soul of sweetness. She only wants to be your friend. You are entirely mistaken. Undine! Take me on, take me now before her eyes, or we'll be lost forever. Oh, indeed, you forget what you are. She flatters you constantly. Nonsense, my dear. Does she ever dare to mention you? To even talk to you about About her? my descent from Hercules on the sinister side? No. What? Do you think that makes me blush? No, about the word or no. No! Leave us now. Uh, we have our own. Undine, Undine! Your Majesty, if you ask me what it resembles, it resembles a, a mountain, a flower, a, a, a cathedral. Hercules had two, exactly in the same place, one alongside the other. They called them the pillars of Hercules. Undine! It, he got them uh, by touching a hydro. Naturally, he had to in order to kill it. It was his fifth labor. Undine, I like you very much. It's a rare occurrence to hear a voice like yours at court, even when this voice insists on discussing my blood, which I do hear from Hercules precisely as you say. But for your own sake, tell me the truth. Yes. Yes, I will tell you the truth. Who are you, my child? I'm an Aldine. I'm from the water. What are you doing here? Is our land the church? It seems so beautiful. It is in order to make the world seem beautiful that you are weeping? No. It's because they wish to take Hans away from me. I suppose they do. Will that so be a great misfortune? A terrible misfortune. If Hans deceives me, he will die. <laughs> Nonsense, my dear. Men have been known to survive under those conditions. Not this one. And what makes you think that you will deceive me? I don't know. When he stepped into the water, he spat the word out to me. He said that he would always love me. They said he would deceive me. What said this, my dear? The king of the ocean, my uncle. He said, if Hans were to deceive you, he would die. I 
complete consternation. They want to know what is your will. Shall I tell them to withdraw? By no means. And the interlude, you, you wish to see it? Of course. When? At once. Oh, wonderful. Now I can ask for this pardon from the room. Princess Bertha, Undine has something to say to you. Yes. I would like to ask your pardon, my Very nice, my child. Yes, but she might answer me. What? I have asked her pardon, and I do not want it. She may at least answer. Bertha, Undine has acknowledged the errors she has made. What? Ever was. I should like you to be friends. Very well, Majesty. I pardon her. Thank you. On condition that she admits publicly that I did not kill the bird. I admit publicly that she did not kill the bird. You can hear it singing joyously in this cage. Oh, I wouldn't let it be killed. <coughs> but it was in her head and she tried to kill it. Oh, don't understand, Andy. One does not speak like that. And what happens next, magician? Yes. 
Does he deceive on thee? Does he? Does he marry Princess Bertha? Does he? Naturally! And what can we see? Well, not like. Oh, yes, please go on. No, Excellency, no. Yes, yes, go on, go on. But... Oh, what's this? My, my hair is falling off. Oh, five years have passed. My, my, my teeth are falling out. I, 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 I'm stuttering. Would you like me to continue? No, no, please, for heaven's sake, an intermission, an intermission! Of another world. You married Amandine, you must forget her. 
If only she would bless me for her. But that cry awakened me the morning she left. I have deceived you, Bertie. Has it ever stopped echoing from the Rhine? From the lake? In the six months since she's gone, every fisherman, every huntsman has tried to find her. She has vanished. She would say she has vanished. And yet she's not far off. This morning they found a wreath of sea urchins and starfish at the chapel door. She left it there. You know that. Oh my darling, how could I that a beautiful old man would see anything in a girl like Undine? When I sent you away, I thought, this man will sure to come back. We'll look left and right. They'll never come upon an enchanted lake, nor at the cape of a dragon, nor even see the forehead of a glistening unicorn. There's nothing to do in that world. You will follow the human path. You will not lose his way. I lost it. Yes, but you found it again. It was in our fifth year of our engagement. In the night in the winter, when you told me it was me you had always loved, and I had run away from you, and you followed me in the snow. They were deep and wan. They spoke plainly of my distress, and you followed them. They were not spirits. They were human tracks, and you followed them. And you carried me in your arms that night. Yes. Like virtually, we carried away with all of you. Where is the swineherd? Under a spreading oak, on a grassy bed well, of I called him, but he did not answer. He is gazing at the sky. Never mind. Where is the kitchen maid? There is a fisherman to see you, my lord. Fetch me the kitchen maid at once, no matter what she's eating. Yes, my lord. My lord, my lord. Say it twice more at post. We have her. She's caught. Yes, yes, and I'll do. Are you sure? Ah, the judges are coming. Judges? What judges? The judges who hold jurisdiction over the supernatural. So soon? Well, they came from Britain, you see, they had a werewolf. And now they'll try the undo. But why must they try her here? Because an undo must be tried on a rock. And after all, you're the complainant. That's true. But don't they know what day it is? Could they try her another day? My lady, the trial must be now. They're right, Bertha. The trial must be now. Don't look at her palms. Bertha, you could be said. They found an old dean in the Rhine. What I shall see won't even know me. Please see her palms. Just a few more minutes, and we shall be at peace. The judges are coming. Marvelous, marvelous. And the exact altitude, just above the realm of the water. And just below the realm of the air. My lord, our felicitation. Our compliments, my lord. You've come in the nick of time, gentlemen. But how did you know there was work for you? Oh, we have a we have an insight unknown to our colleagues in the criminal and civil law. Also, our job is more difficult. And to determine the line between two vineyards is simple, uh, but to fix the proper boundary between the spirits pop up as him. <laughs> Excuse me, but hit me the rest. But the case at hand seems quite simple. Uh, this is the first time we try an Undine who does not deny being an Undine. All the more reason to be careful. I'm quite right, my dear. Did you bring Undine with you? Yes, we have her in custody. Uh, but before we bring her in, we'd like to ascertain the exact nature of your complaints. My complaint? My complaint is the complaint of all mankind. Is it so much that we have? These few yards between heaven and hell. Is it so much of this hair that turns gray, the skin that turns dry, these teeth that fall out? Is it so much to ask? To be left alone with my wife? To be alone at last? That's asking a great deal, Knight. It may seem surprising that these creatures derive all their satisfaction from staring at us while we wash up, kiss our wives, eat our food. But fact, each human gesture, meanest, most noblest, comes with the presence of grotesqueness, with horns, constantly dancing its round. What's to be done? We must resign ourselves. Has there ever been an age when it did not infest us? Age? It's never been a moment. Yes, there was a moment, one only. It was late August, near Augsburg. 
be stretched out beneath the oak of an apple tree, and suddenly we felt as if the whole world was free of the shadows that beset it. Above our heads, we saw a lark soaring in the heavens. Without its Quite right. On the road, and trotted a horseman. An attendant horseman with a scythe. Oh, by the river, in the sun, the mill wheel turned slowly. Without it dragging its hold at the enormous shadowy figure that grinds the souls of the damned. For that instant, and that instant only, the whole world seemed single hearted. At work, at peace. At play. Yet, for the first time, we tasted a certain loneliness. The loneliness of all humanity. But in the next moment, the horsemen was joined by death. The clouds bristled as always with lances and broom. The fish headed devils joined the dancing couples. There they were, all back at their post again, just as. Where's the accused? I understand your fears, but 
this is the same man who helped this, uh, determine the physical integrity of the electress Josepha in connection with the annulment of her marriage. And she commented especially on his talents. I tell you that this is our deal. Right. That's enough. I understand that it is difficult for you to witness the hostility of this woman in public, but I can do so without touching her. Examine her through the glass, the parts that differentiate her from the human brain. Never mind the glass. Best not to insist, my dear colleague. Nevertheless, the evidence is sufficient. Is there anyone present who denies that this is an undeed? I deny it. Oh, who is that man? Throw him out! Don't kill her, nor she was good to us. A good undeed, that's all. She loved us. Yeah, affectionate varieties even among turtles. Since we hear no objection, the supernatural identification has been confirmed. This, in fact, is an on-D. We will now proceed to the second part of the trial. Tonight, do you accuse this on Dean of having tra transgressed the boundaries of human nature illegally and causing you discomfort and torture in your domain? I? Certainly not. But you do accuse her of being a sorceress. On Dean a sorceress. Knight, we are merely trying to establish the crime. On Dean a sorceress? Who is that man? I'm a witness, Your Honor. He lies. Ah, in that case, you, you may speak. On Dean is not an on Dean. She's a woman. She's renounced her race and betrayed all of her interests. On Dean is a woman. A sorceress. She can call upon the earth and the sun to do her bidding. The rat is her servant. She gave up her power in favor of human specialty. Hay fever, headache, and cooking. Is that true, Nigel, or is it false? If I understand you correctly, you accuse her of having taken upon a favorable appearance in order to ferret the secrets of humanity? Oh, humanity has no secrets, Your Honor. Only affliction. Doubtless, it also has treasures. I'm pretty sure she stole your gold and jewels, Knight. Undine? Jewels and gold meant nothing to Undine. She preferred the, the treasures of humanity, the most humblest. Cooking, cleaning, the kettle, the spoon. All the elements loved Undine, but she did not return the affection. She loved water because it made soup. She loved fire because it made omelets. And she loved the wind because it dried the wash. You know, write this into your record, Judge. Andine is the most human being that has ever lived. We are informed that the accused was in the habit of locking herself up in her room for hours each day to practice her magic arts. Yes. Well, what were the results of her magic, you? A meringue, Your Honor. A meringue? With what sort of meringue? She worked for two months to discover the secret of a good meringue. We thank you, fisherman. That is one of the deepest of human secrets. And did she succeed? It was pure magic, Your Honor. We don't suppose that a few strings pulled them from Tyson. No, 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 my dear colleague. At last. I understand the full nature of your complaints tonight. On Dean, you are accused of having brought this man the joys of marriage, something to which every man is entitled. Instead of giving him a proper woman, you force it upon him a wearisome existence with a woman who loved nothing but her kitchen. And for that, you have robbed him of love, the greatest of all crimes. Naturally, and Ondine is incapable of love. Ondine incapable of love. A knight, it is becoming a tad bit difficult to understand of what exactly do you accuse this woman? I accuse this woman of adoring me beyond human endurance. I accuse her of only thinking of me, living for me, and only breathing for me. That 
that's not a crime exactly. I was this woman's god. Do you understand? Now, now. You don't believe me. Answer me, Auntie. Who is your god? You. Ask me. You see? Auntie, answer me. Who were your angels? You. See, she pushes blasphemy as far as love. Auntie, whose picture did you see in the Holy Book of Hours? Yours. You see? But where is this all leading us, knights? We are here to train on Dean, not to judge the nature of love. Nevertheless, that is what you are required to do. It is love I am choosing. I choose the highest love of being the foulest, and the truest love of being the most false. And this old Dean, who lived for me, Deceive me with virtue. If what she says is true, she could not have possibly deceived him with virtue. I not have deceived him with virtue. Swear it, then. Swear it before these judges that you deceived me with virtue. Swear it. But I deceived him with virtue. If what she says is true, we'll find out soon enough. My dear colleague, uh, please don't bestow upon her the three canonical questions. The first. Dean, when you see this man running, what do you do? I lose my breath. Hmm. When this man snores, excuse me, I do you hear in his sleep? I hear the sound of singing. So far, she answers the first two correctly. The third, if you please. Oh, Dean, when this man tells you an amusing story, Twentieth time in a row. What is your reaction? It becomes twenty times funnier than before. And nevertheless, you deceived him with Bertram? I deceived him with Bertram. You needn't shout at me. We heard you. I deceived him with Bertram. Fame hatch. Answer me now, Auntie, and answer me honestly. When did you deceive him? Where is Bertram? In Burgundy, where he's waiting for me to join him. Hmm. Where did you see Hans with Bertram? In the forest. Hmm. Uh, was it morning? Was it night? It was noon. Was it hot? Was it cold? It was icy. He said, I love to keep us warm. One doesn't forgive such words. Hmm. Why don't you sign Bertram's instead? Bertram has been gone for these last six months. He is beyond the reach of the law. Hmm. Your powers seem limited. Here he comes. Bertram! Now, now, knights. Just a moment. You are the Count Bertram? Yes. This woman says she deceived her husband with you. What? Is it true? If she said it is, it is true. Where did this happen? In her room, in the castle. In the morning, at night. At midnight. Was it hot? Was it cold? The logs were blazing on the hearth. How hot it is to hell, she said. One never forgets such words. Mm. This perfect What did you have on Dean? You kiss her lips. Take her into your arms and kiss her lips. I only take my orders from her. Hmm. On Dean, ask him to kiss your lips. Not in front of all these people. Never. And yet you expect us to do that you just gave yourself up to him. Kiss me, Bertram. You really wish it. Just so that we can prove that we can do it. Kiss me in front of all these people. Waiting on Dean. But if I should shudder, it is only because I am cold. Make up your mind, Nandine. Can't I get something to cover us at least? No, as you are. Very well. All the better. But if I should scream, it is only because I'm scared in front of all these people. Any time now. If I, if, if I should, um, if I should faint, you can 
can do whatever you please with me, Richard. Whatever you please. Well, Undine. Well, Richard? Hans, Hans! There you have it. It is perfectly clear. And why should it be so clear? Do you think lovers really know if it's night or day, or if it's hot or cold when they really love each other? Thank you, Bertrand. The trial is over. Must I go on, Dean? Farewell, Bertrand. Farewell. The court will now deliver its judgment. Attention, attention. It is the judgment of this court that this son, Dean, has transgressed the boundaries of human nature. Why she wished to make us believe that she deceived you with Bertrand when she in fact did not is beyond the scope of our inquiry. But nevertheless, since we see no great crime done, she shall be spared the humiliation of a public execution. She shall have her throat cut this day directly after sunset. Until that time, we place her in the hands of the public executioner. What's that noise? Wedding bells, my dear one. The night just been married. <coughs> ah, a nuptial procession is forming outside of the chapel. A uh, night, uh, permit us to join you in your hour of happiness. Who is this woman that, that walks towards me like a creature from another world? We don't know her. She's not with us. It's the kitchen maid, my lord. You asked me to fetch her. How beautiful she is. Beautiful? She? How very beautiful. Then we shall not contradict you. Will you proceed us? No. I, I have to hear first what she says. She alone knows the end of the story. Oh, speak. We're listening. See how it is mine. She has every reason to be. My face is plain, my nature sour, but all my soul is like a flower. That rhymes, does it not? Rhymes? Not at all! Had I been free to choose my lot, my hands had never touched a pot. Tell me not to tell me those verses of rhyme. Verses? What verses? My clothes are poor, my face is clean, and yet the pirate is my pain. And there's much salt in my tears of those shed by emperors. And when the butler bids his queen and hers, it's time to wear queen. Or oh, will we two come to your city and kneeling and ask your grace of pity? Will the spirit on our brows the same, the fronts and thorns and marks of shame? Will you know us from the other, my Lord, my Savior, and my brother? You're not supposed to tell me that was a poem, was it not? A poem? Not at all. All I heard was a scullion complaining she had been wrongly accused of stealing a spoon. She said her paws had been aching since. Is that a scythe that she bears in her hand? A scythe? Not at all! That's a spindle! It's a broom! I thank you, kitchen maid. When you next come, I shall be ready. The bride is already in the chapel, my lord. The priest is waiting. Go and tell her that I have come. Come, then. Now, the mistress, I will kick you in a room and show One you. One moment! Don't kill him, old one. We haven't forgotten our pact. You cannot judge men by our standards, old one. He only deceived me because he loved me. Bondi. It is only because he loved me that he deceived me, to show the world how pure I was and how true. Bondi, he's made you suffer. Yes, I have suffered. But you have to remember that we are talking about humans. He is going to die. What does it matter? He's going to get everything. Your sisters will call his names three times. And he is going to die. And you will forget everything. But he has so much to live for now. I will have him die the same moment that he forget him. That seems more humane. But he has birthed them now. What does it matter? He's all whirling about in his head. You've strained his heart on me. Huh? How could I? It was all whirling about in his head. Pointing, I 
is all slipped away from him like a finger or a ring that is too wide for the finger. He is, he is logical. He's quite logical. He's mad. You're saying he's to be married. Hmm. She is in the chapel. He is in the stable. His horse is saying, Goodbye, dear master, till we meet again in the sky. His horse has become a poet. Listen to him. He's cursing me. Oh, what does it matter? He won't marry the woman he does not love. He's quite logical. He's willing about it, clearly and logically. He's quite mad. He loves you. He's here. He's mad. He's here. My name is Hans. It's a beautiful name. I'm Ian Hans. The most beautiful names in the world, are they not? Yes. Hans and Andy. No. Andy first. That's what we call on the play which I play from time to time. I don't play a very big part because, as you said, it's not very bright. I'm just a man, sorry. I, I loved on Dean because she wanted me. I deceived her because I had to. I strayed from the appointed path. I was trapped. Forgive me, Hans. But why do you make this mistake? All of you. I mean, was I a mad nut for love? Instead, you fall upon all your weight on some poor knight called Hans. Between the torrents and the chase and the court, did I ever have a spare moment in my life? No. It wasn't very just of you, Undine. Farewell, Hans. And then you see, they leave you. The day when everything becomes clear. The day you realize that you would die if they left you. The day you realize you've never loved something as much as you love death. And they look at you with a lip and glance and say, farewell. I'm going to forget everything. Else. And not a real farewell. Not those farewells that part on the threshold of death. But a farewell forever. It will be the only farewell that has been said in this world. Live, Hans. Live, and you too will forget. Live. If only I can work up an interest in living. A little interest, and I forget to breathe. He died, they said, because it was a nuisance to breathe. Why did you let the fisherman catch you on you? What did you wish to tell me? That there will be an Undine who will mourn for you always. No. No one will mourn for me always. The last in my house, I shall leave no trace behind me. There will only be an Undine. She will have forgotten. No, I have taken precautions. You used to make fun of me because I walked around the house doing the same thing. I counted my steps, and that was true. Because I knew the day would come when I would have to go back. I forgot for a moment. Go on. Go on. I took some things out of your room, and I threw them into the water. They seemed so strange in the water, these bits of metal and wood that spoke to me. Once I'm there, I'm not going to know what it means exactly, but I will hear it. And in my way, and there's always going to be an Undine who was your wife. Thank you, Undine. Undine! You're going to call me three times. We only have a moment left, Hans. Speak to me quickly. What's wrong? You're pale. I too am being called on me. Quickly, Hans. Ask 
me. Ask me a question. What did you say the first time I saw you come out of the store? I said how beautiful he is. And when you saw me in the child. I said how stupid he is. And when I said it was not wrong, I think. I said that we should have this hour to remember always. The hour before you loved me. The hour before you kissed me. I can't wait, Uncle. Kiss me now. Auntie! I'll be quiet. Look, there she comes. Ooh. Her face is plain. Her nature is sour. But all her soul is like a flower. Help! Help, please! Like I would have loved it. 